to our Best of GDI end of year episode. This is where our editor Joe puts together an edit of our more thought provoking and lucid conversations on such weighty topics like global finance, philosophy, social progress, avant garde literature, the works of Barth versus. Actually, no, this is just a highlight clip of us talking about what we ate for breakfast, entertainment, award shows, uh, diagnosing our injuries, life issues, and of course, pie and a lot of tacos. So from us to you, happy holidays. Enjoy. Um, Shannon, I saw a tiny little sookie. Um, uh, uh, oh, yeah. You, you had, you had she, given us there. just a tiny little sookie. She's like passed out. She is totally passed out. She's so yeah. crazy later, isn't she? Yeah, she will. Yeah. It'll be the witching hour. She heard us talking. I heard her gr- I heard her grumble oh, and then Hi Ray. Hi Ray Ray. Oh, yeah. Aw, she's so cute. Hi Ray. Oh, look, there's Odie. He says Hello. this is what I do when mom is doing her show. I sleep. Nice. Very very <laughs> well behaved. I mean, that's all this guy does. Yeah, all three of our dogs Sweet. are just bored. So that's that's. that's going on. <laughs> they are. They're bored with us. He's like, um, let me know when you're done talking. Yeah, we- so the way I have experienced this has been uh, a particular video gets taken down, mm-hmm. and it says this video is claimed to have copyright content, and then I immediately say, no, it doesn't. You got three strikes all in a row. And I understand like, that. They, yeah. The complaints came so fast that you built up the three strikes. But how did it get all the way to a strike without you knowing about it? It was just, you have a, the first day it was like, you have a strike. A day later, you have a second strike. If you have three strikes, your candle goes away. I'm like, well, there's no way I'm going to get three of these. Next day, third strike. This is the thing that, that underlies this whole conversation for me is you have paid money yeah. for the right to play the music. Yeah. All the other content in these videos is yours. You generated it. Yeah. When they struck, or the stuff that got hit is from a time where we played the songs live on the show. Yeah, right. I remember you stopped do that. doing that in yeah. 2015 for the reason of... Just to avoid trouble. Don't we just, we know we paid for it. We know it's legit, but YouTube gives us zero way of verifying Do you that. know who the originating strike issuer is? The, or the complaint issuer? That's I mean? say. It's like finding out your neighbor said, hey, your neighbor says your uh, dog poops on his lawn, so we've taken your house... Uh, put your dog in a kennel. What, we locked up your house. Yeah, we've locked up your house. You can't get in. In 90 uh, days, you might be able to go back in. Yeah, what neighbor was it, I would ask. And they'd say, oh, we can't, we're we not going to tell you that. Is. Well, what can I do? Well, you can say, you can click this button and just tell you us can, what. You can fill out this form and send it through the mail saying you you dispute that. And someday, yeah. maybe someone will look at it. I got in a, a discussion. It wasn't even an argument with a guy on Twitter who's like, well, wait a minute, though. This YouTube is huge. It's really hard for them. They're going to make mistakes. And I'm like, yeah, man, I was making these exact statements five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I still believe it. Like, yeah, it is hard for YouTube and it's going to take a while for them to figure it out. But at this point, they should have a better way of doing this. This shouldn't happen to you. I've seen this happen so many times to so many people. I've had to fight it myself. I'm just kind of tired. My patience has run out. And it's not that I hate YouTube. Uh, it's not that I'm even taking the DTNS channel off of YouTube. I'm not, I'm I'm not protesting. I'm not throwing down things in anger, but I'm certainly kind of just done. I'm not excited about that. And and I'm hugely sympathetic to what a, what a big company has to do to manage all of this. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's a big deal. I get it. I understand how this stuff. I could do it. It's too, too big. I'm not saying this will be true for everyone. I'm not saying this is the death of YouTube. Don't try to read in a bunch of other stuff in here. I'm just saying for me. And that kind of doesn't make sense anymore. Man, just tossing me to the curb like that was. Yeah. Re- that was a and again, I think it's worth repeating. You didn't break any law. I don't want to fight with YouTube, so I'm going to just not play the songs. I'm going to put them in post, which means it also took more time and effort for me to do it in post. Like yeah. there's all these like add-on knock-on effects that I'm just that I tried to 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 accommodate a thing I was already not you know doing anything illegal with. Well, you should ah. obviously sue the people who gave you the uh, the takedown notice. That is that is that is the way this is set. It's illegal for them to issue a a false claim. So uh, there you go, Scott. No problem. Yeah, I just need a pro bono uh, lawyer friend. And then right. I'm- well, and also the identity of the people issuing the takedown. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, dude. Let me 
face my accusers. There's got to be some kind of something for that. Because CES is not going to Vegas. CES is CES, and it dominates all. And and any time in my past that I've tried to fit something else in while I'm trying to do CES, both suffer. The uh, game or just your enjoyment? of No, my me, me, uh, Roger. I'm sorry. <laughs> You two definitely have that. We just spent four days together uh, <laughs> doing nothing but looking at each other. Energy. <laughs> we had a lovely. We had a lovely ride home. We were we were sat next to each other on the plane yesterday. Uh, we had a lovely ride home, didn't we? Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I. It, it just you know. Roger, we, didn't we? we can always tell. Did we? What? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was working at a piece of cookie for my molars. <laughs> oh man, really, really. Oh my goodness, Sarah Lane, you're back. I'm back. A very large tree. Um, you know, sp- uh, I don't know, hundreds of tons of tree. Uh, it <laughs> fell on my property. Uh, and yesterday I was not sure if I, <laughs> I was living in a safe zone. So uh yeah, it was a little touch and what? go for a while. Did the tree hit your house? No. No, it did not. Okay. But but so like, weren't sure where it was going next. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. The tree kind of went parallel to where I live, mm-hmm. but was at the top of a hill where it could roll could down roll and down. still yeah. crush yeah. me uh-huh. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, not wanting to be crushed is a reasonable reaction. I think. Totally. The um, Not only the internet, but literally the power to... I don't know, a hundred houses in this <gasps> entire area oh, wow. are all attached to that tree. And I asked yeah. her which yeah, yeah. utility company was it? PG&E. PG&E, Roger. Of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Who else would it be <laughs> to muck up something else? Um, but but yeah, so, so the tree, there is part of the tree that is still standing, and there's a lot of power lines attached to the tree. The tree has to come down and they're going to put up, you know, like a, I don't know, like a telephone pole in its place. And that is sort of like TBD. Who knows when that's going to happen? <laughs> oh, my God. That's so pg and me to <laughs> attach power lines to a tree that is known to rot. She has gone through fire, flood and falling trees. For this show, you should, oh, you man. should be in a James Taylor song. And I said back to Tom, I'm like, why did I leave LA again? <laughs> Sidewalks sound so great. <laughs> <laughs> Just living in civilization. Uh, and so we've been we've been following the uh, the tree saga as yes. it is secured from rolling down the hill onto Sarah, and now today being dismembered. What a piece like that. And there might be maybe seventy of them that have to wow. come down over the course of the day, are like hundreds of pounds each. You can't you can't just let them fall into the street and like hope mm-hmm. for the best. Right. You have to you have to wrap them and then once once the chainsaw lets it loose, then you lower it down slowly like a person. Mm-hmm. So uh, it is, and then there's a. It, it's amazing that you guys can't hear what's going on. I feel like it's uh, you know Armageddon uh, out there. Where do you get to a point where we're just gonna have deodorants named after people, just like up and up people. <laughs> Like yeah. smell like Brad's pits. Yeah, or it'll be like you'll have like you'll have like the Charlton Heston or you know Charles Bronson. Like well, you know, if they have like perfume and cologne named after celebrities, yeah, yeah. that's like, that why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? Oh no! <laughs> like I Elizabeth like nice Taylor deodorant, twenty-four hour deodorant. Oh, is that Julia Roberts? <laughs> The problem is none of us can touch each other anymore. So, you know, right. yeah. you just kind of, you're going to get a whiff and be like, ah, somebody's wearing Julia. I love that. Instead of bumping elbows, you're encouraged to get close and sniff. <laughs> nice to meet Not you. Too close. It would be kind of like a dance, right? Like you're like, do you want to meet? And then the other person's yes. And you have to like decide that seven feet away from each other. And then you walk up, sniff and, you know, in unison. And then that's it. I use this natural deodorant brand called Myro, and there, um, it's it does smell nice, but it's the same sort of like, for example, one scent is called Big Dipper. The Giant Dipper. I don't know if you've all r- ridden the Giant Dipper. I've seen it, but I I have like, I don't know how many what times. What is it? Does it have a ride. flinty smell? It, I, it's not flinty, but <laughs> at the beginning of the ride, you go into a tunnel before you kind of like climb and do the big drop. And you can't see anything in the tunnel, you know, and it's sort of like a scary way to start the ride. It's not really a scary ride. It's really fun. But that tunnel smells like 
like a model train kind of like a mixture of soot and uh, I don't know old wood because mm. it's old. It like <laughs> there's something about it that I can smell it right now just talking about it and it's like because it's exciting and when you're a kid you're like I'm on a roller coaster and it has smelled that way as long as I've been alive. Like it's just the way it smells, which I associate with fun. If someone smelled like the Big Dipper Tunnel, <laughs> I would be I would be really into it. Like you smell fun. You smell like a really good day. It, it is That's an interesting great. coincidence that today is Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo, so you can match up both. <gasps> oh, the same so oh, true. Man. Oh, where would I, I feel go? Extra bad, but oh, I gotta have does the... Taco Bell. Have anything? Maybe I'll put the lasagna in a taco. <laughs> Yeah, just, I mean, just fold some lasagna in a in a tortilla. Yeah, lasagna taco, lasagna burrito. Yeah, but but it's Taco Tuesday, so. <sighs> so uh, I mean, yeah, lasagna has cheese and ground beef. You, you what what's a, better in a taco than cheese and ground a, beef? You could use a small tortilla and make it a soft lasagna taco. Yeah, soft lasagna taco. Basically, the pasta, the <laughs> lasagna noodle There's itself. No hard lasagna taco. Yeah, the lasagna itself is just a soft taco if you fold it up. <laughs> I don't like you know. You put on a macaroni and cheese. That sounds a little crazy. I'm just trying to get the most taco Sarah, Tuesday some of, my out of my lasagna that Some I of culinary <laughs> culinary history's greatest achievements were because someone was crazy. Literally. I understand. Literally. I'm just just I'm just saying for the record. Check your history, Lane. You know this whole lasagna burrito thing sounds a little crazy. It's just it's, you know what you you know what's just bad. And someday and when you go to Las Vegas, you will sit down at the taco lasagna restaurant and read on the menu how this was invented during the pandemic of 2020. By by none other than Tom Merritt. <laughs> when Tom Merritt found it was Taco Tuesday and Cinco de Mayo, and all he had was lasagna. <laughs> I'm going to throw you under the bus pretty hard right now for just right. a second, and you can go ahead and hate me for it, but... If you ever wanted to do your own live with it segment, I mm -hmm. wonder if you couldn't try to live with a keyboard where you actually type the way <laughs> that traditional people learned how to type on keyboards. You got three months. <laughs> I, uh, Wait, I understand the direction of this. What would that product be? A keyboard and you learning how to type properly. But that's but not I, a function of the keyboard, is it? I have a keyboard. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about that. Okay, We're so it's not living with a new keyboard. You're saying live with. You're living with a type. new reality. Of oh, using so a he's keyboard. living with Mavis Beacon teaches typing. This is Sarah's uh, very Correct. kind way of saying learn to type. Learn to yeah. type, you <laughs> jerk. When I see it in person, I'm just like, <sighs> okay, yeah. breathe, breathe through it. How do you what do, do you it? How do you do me it? Typing. I, I, trust me, I have. But any more now that. No, but I now I know you do. You still imagine you still imagine it. Everybody shut up. <laughs> Listen to me for a second. I feel like you've gotten so far in life with the hunt and peck where most people are very bad typers. You're a really good typer because of this. But how good would you be if you <laughs> typed really appropriately? Uh, That's what I uh, want to know. Yeah. You're not alone in this, by the way. Uh, okay. I remember Natalie Del Conti when she was Natalie Del Conti, not Natalie Morris, so that's how long ago it was, yeah. just like openly laughing at me when she was she was like, what are you doing typing? I'm like, I don't know, that's how I type. Is it not that he's just whacking the keys hard, or is that it? No, he, no, he uses, no. he uses, he uses two his two index fingers to type. He doesn't actually oh. type. Oh. I didn't no, know I that. Type. You're like my dad, except he did it with the <laughs> birds. He did it with the middle fingers. That's even weirder. It what? is weird. I, I agree. It was weird. It looked like you're flipping <laughs> us all up upside down or flipping us off. But I had an I almost went into couch collecting. Like I wanted to just buy and collect couch. Couch? <laughs> <laughs> Not but right. I was sofa? thinking it was very yeah, like a sofa. And I was thinking at some point I would need a giant I would have to like buy a warehouse in the sticks just to have this huge collection. <laughs> the comfiest collector. I just, for some reason, it just kind of stuck with me for like a year because I was shopping for a couch. It's like, I really like all these couches. You know, just collect them all. I That's... think we need to call the Bravo Network and get this man a show. That, I, I see this happening right. right now. Right? Yeah. What yeah. would you call that? Like a sneak guy, a person who collects sneakers is a sneaker head. <laughs> What? A couch head or like a, I just have anxiety about where are you gonna put all these couches? How about a sofa snagger. So, 
<laughs> that works. That's like a euphemism <laughs> and a really bad one. Yeah. Uh, Don't ask what it means. I uh, would like to to uh, to apologize to Twitter <laughs> for being on it. Usually a very uncon uncontroversial follow. If anything, when you wade into issues, you're usually there to try and offer the sage, like, "Hey guys, let's wisdom. just you know, yeah, let's just realize that it's not all, yeah, right." But much as even the most wizened gods still have old beef <laughs> from the Titans, uh, <laughs> there are there are things that will still get your goat, and uh, it, it seems as if the Joe Rogan to Spotify thing is part of it so much so that you wanted to make a draw a rhetorical line in the sink. <sighs> really, this whole thing gets resolved if you think about it as Joe Rogan's now doing a show for Spotify. No one would get upset if there was no podcast and Spotify said, guess what? We're going to do the Joe Rogan show. You were trying to play a peacemaker and say, here indeed is the hole in the sheet. Like, let's just not think of it as losing a podcast. Well, Think of it I as made the, gaining I, a Spotify original. I made the cardinal sin of a journalist, which was to forget that other people aren't journalists. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote like, hey, uh, Joe Rogan Experience, when it goes exclusive to Spotify, is a Spotify show, not a podcast, and we should refer to it as such. Meaning, when I write things on DTNS... I will call it a Spotify show to make it clear that it's a Spotify show that we're talking about, not a widely distributed podcast. And hence, peace in our time, Justin. The uh, whole controversy evaporates. Uh, what I forgot is that other people read that as like, hey, everybody, this is what you're going to do from now on. We can't call it a podcast. That's giving it too much credit. And and that's not really what I, I read it more as you, Joe Rogan has left this realm and now <laughs> is assuming another yeah. another phase i think uh, a lot of people hung that on it you're and i get why so it's so it's a form of <clears throat> podcast transcendentalism he, he <laughs> uh let's check out the mailbag you know, we got a lot of feedback on our special uh time to listen episode of DTNS yesterday. If you haven't listened to it, I I hope you do. And I hope you get something out of it. And we got so much good feedback. We don't have time for it here, but just wanted to read some excerpts of a few. Uh, one person said, the stories told by those I've listened to for years touched me and gave insight. I have never had so clearly. I'm gonna... Will you pick this up, please, Tom? Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Uh, the story has listened for years touched me. It gave insight I've never had so clearly. Another person said, I know about the inequality either due to race or economics or both but knowing isn't feeling or understanding. I'll probably never be able to understand, but your podcast did something that most other reporting has failed to do. For me, it went beyond the facts and hit me on a more personal level. Thank you and your correspondence for this gift. Another person said, I normally write off shows and segments like what you did on Monday as pure virtue signaling. In the case of DTNS, however, your years of apolitical reporting, which I am immensely thankful for, have given you a level of credibility that other outlets simply don't have. As a result, I was happy to listen, really listen, and I now have a better appreciation and perspective. I imagine the decision for this episode wasn't easy, and I imagine you published this episode knowing that you'd get some blowback, probably even people exclaiming that they'd be canceling their Patreon subscriptions. I applaud your courage. Thank you uh, for yielding the DTNS platform to share the voices of the black community in this moment. Uh, those are from different people, all Amazing. those sentiments, but uh, they're representative of the vast majority uh, of people. And uh, yeah, our, uh, our Patreon right now is down six patrons on the month, which is about normal. Uh, as people get charged at the beginning of the month, they tend to go like, oh, wait, I can't really afford that. So uh, it seems like that is not a factor either. And let me just take one second to really, from the bottom of my heart, and on behalf, at least from Rob, and I'm sure Brother Tech, thank the folks that took time to listen and and comment and share their thoughts. Because the reality is when you have a conversation like this, you really do think twice about putting these type of stories out because you're bearing your soul um, and you, you're putting your perspective out there that you're not sure that people are going to get. And you, the, the idea is not to preach or to beat you down or to shame anybody. We just want people to understand the world is different. And we took 
you know, the time because it was a real conversation. It was a real portrait into our lives. And, the, you know, and you always worry about the response and seeing the response all day today and most of yesterday has absolutely blown me away. And I, I just have to say thank you. And I, I appreciate the folks that took the time to listen and um, and offer comments on it. Thanks, man. I have threatened my wife that things go really south. I, I'll try to I'll try to jump the Golden Gate Bridge in it. <laughs> oh well, that's uplifting. Yeah. Wait, hey, well, jump the Golden Gate is. Bridge? What what would you be jumping? Off of it with the car. You would drive off the Golden Gate. That's no, not off. Point. I would I would hire a ramp to sit there for for perhaps the first two minutes or whatever, and to see how fast I could go. I, so I could, so I'll, I'll clear the, um, the suspension line. It's very elaborate. It is. Yeah. Like you've really thought, I mean, there's so much. I even have, I have like, I have the music picked out and then I know what will go on oh, the headstone and all the here, rest of it. Here's so Roger being stunt. like, how weird that you would name your car, but I've got music picked out for when I drive my car triumphantly off the Golden Gate Bridge from a ramp. Yes. I oh, definitely it's... used to <laughs> think of letters and numbers as having colors. Mm, really? Yeah. That are that are unique. Like, like you have twenty six different colors. Like the letter oh, B is wow. yellow. Wow. Wow, that's a new one. C is blue. D is green. Is that D is kind of, of a, like a light blue gray? Yeah, maybe like in preschool that was. I don't know. Like you had yeah. Some blocks that right, just right. stuck. But I mean, yeah, I again, the alphabet, childish. at least the you know American English alphabet, you got twenty six different colors. Like, are you thinking of what W is? Yeah, it's it's, w. it's, it's kind of an off gray. It looks and like X is black and Z is brown. What about H? It's uh, orange. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening right now? He, yeah. he, he, has, a, he has a specific form of. Is it That's a really cool. No, I've it's like an internal synesthesia. <laughs> What's, yeah. Yeah. What's R? R is, is really dark brown, almost black. Wow. Yeah. You should make a, like a, I don't know, some sort of a swatch, an alphabet swatch. Uh huh. Make it like a French. Have somebody or knit or you an alphabet scarf. A, an when watch. someone's like, that's a very interesting yeah. color pattern, you can be like, it's the alphabet. Oh, it's the alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see what you're saying. Like, you don't have the letters on there. You just have the colors. Yeah. Yeah. And then would I look at it and go, ooh, could you spell things? And would I then be able to tell you? I mean, that? some alternative universe accessibility. I don't know if it thing. would work that way, though, because it's when I picture the letter, it has a color, right? But when I look at a color, I don't think the letter. A letter. Uh -huh. So when you see a dark brown, you don't automatically think, hey, yeah, what's yeah. R doing on that pant? <laughs> that is really cool. Is there is there a hot pink in there? J. I'm trying Let's to say. think. No, I don't think so. Huh. Of see, all... but that's the thing. It's really hard for me to go from the color to the letter. Tell me the yeah. letter. I'll give you yeah, the color. You know. What color is J? It's like a purplish blue. T? Hmm. What? T. Light pink. There's your T pink. is light pink. P. Okay. P. The letter P. O oh, P. Oh, I mean T like in T. Oh, T is orange. T, T is orange. But it's T. like a dark orange. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm blown away. Uh, <laughs> in, a, in a good way. It's just it's I've a just, weird thing. I know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always thought I was weird to type everything in my head. Right. But this we is more interesting than that. Yeah. <laughs> all I think of when I think of Zynga is like, that's where I used to work. The building, yeah. <laughs> the building. Oh yeah. There was a it, picture in one of the stories I read where I'm like, yeah, oh, it's six fifty yeah, yeah. Townsend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't have the huge Zynga Zs at no, every it, level. It, yeah. You know, it, but... it was definitely, um, yeah. They made it their own, but because mm -hmm. it. It's such a weird building. It was designed to mimic, a, from what I was told by building management, designed to mimic a cruise ship. And oh. so the center of the building is where the the office and all the floors are off to one side. And they, the idea is that you look over it, you could have a fashion show in the center. No, no. <laughs> just, instead, weird. it was just a big empty space. Like, I don't think yeah. we ever really used it for anything. But now that doesn't matter because a single entity owns everything. <laughs> I mean, back then we only rented two floor. We leased two floors. Yeah, it was the Sega building back then because Sega yeah. ha had it was, the name. On the it was the, the Sega building. building. That's right. Well, we had because well, when when they sold everybody because they sold ZDNet to CNET, they sold us to Paul Allen, they sold Key Media off. 
uh, people, some people left, but CNET kept ZDNet there and they had to do this weird thing where a bunch of people moved their desks down to the fourth floor where the CNET section was, but we were still in the same, like there wasn't any se actual separation. You just had to observe an invisible line like, oh, that's where the CNET thing was. And of course, in their break room, they had 25 cent sodas in their ah, room. I Ooh. took advantage of it. Look at that. Yeah. Do you remember there There was, it wasn't every Friday, but there was like a, maybe once a month, it would be like a, it was like tech TV social and they'd give us all candy. Yeah, what oh, was yeah, it called? That, that was Tuesday. Yeah, it was a Tuesday, yeah. I think. And like all, I, I would just hoard they had a, it. They had a clever and, name. and so in my, you know, in my drawer, in my cube, I had like <laughs> all the great stuff because I wouldn't well, eat it right away. They wouldn't let me keep food in my desk anymore. I remember that because building came up to me. It's like you, <laughs> along with the other person you know of, uh, your desks are, 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 uh, right. Like are, a rat problem I, or something. Yeah. <laughs> they did get mad when I would, um, I would take some of the panels out of my oh uh, yeah out of my cube so that I could see the person on the other side like Kevin Rose was on the other side and we were like we you know like we want to like pass hey. notes yeah and the uh, the maintenance people would come by every now and again and be like please put the panel back up on your cube <laughs> it was always floated to me as like Sarah you you know you need to abide by the rules for safety and I'm like but I don't know what's unsafe about the panel being missing. I don't know. Oh, I do remember one of management, and this is why we couldn't play football anymore, threw a football and nailed one of the sprinklers <laughs> and it caused a flood. And that was the no no playing ball. Two years down the road, somebody's playing football and they're like, you can't play football. And the person says, well, why can't I play football? And they're like, I don't know. That's the rule. Because nobody remembers it's because of the sprinkler thing anymore, right? The center of the building's empty. You can overlook it, right? You look overlook the railings, this big empty space, and you're thinking, paper airplane. Nope. Nope, you can't fling anything off or throw it. Because uh, by the time that paper airplane got to the ground, it, it would have built up a dangerous amount of velocity. Yes. Do you remember the email <laughs> from HR that said, okay, before we used to have casual Fridays, and then they just told everyone's like, yeah, you don't have to be dressed, dressed. Like, you don't have to be dressed to the nines to show up at work. You know, you could just show up in jeans be, and a t-shirt. Because, because we were all in power suits the rest of the time. <laughs> the <laughs> rest of us, the rest of us in call for help and screen service, like, oh, we weren't supposed to be dressing in jeans and t-shirts going to work. I had come we to can. work in like a, I don't know, like an oversized hoodie or something. Kathy Brooks at the time, she sort of walked by and I was, you know, doing whatever I was doing, you know, uh, you know, doing time code on, on some video. And she was like, mm. Mm, you're very casual. And I, I remember being like, I'm dressed. <laughs> I'm wearing clothing. I'm here. Yeah. What do you want? I remember walking down the hall and I think it was either Peter Hammersley, probably Peter Hammersley or somebody at that level or up who looked at me. I was like, tuck your shirt in. Like I had a collared shirt on, but it wasn't tucked what? in. And I was like, really? So, so like, it's so well, funny I you would, mentioned oh that. Oh my god, that would make me so one mad. Of, one of the reviews for screensavers, I remember they really. It, it was a. It was from a local uh, news reporter in the southeast. He said he really liked to show, but what's the deal with no one tucking their shirt in? And I was just <laughs> <laughs> like on on air. Right, it was like, like Leo, Patrick, and Mark. However, you know, uh, okay. back at the beginning of DTNS, I used to wear a suit coat every episode. I remember that. And then I moved here. And was like, it's too hot. I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. But I remember a couple people being like, hey, what changed about your wardrobe? And you're like, I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. What's this behind me? Could it be oh, a, sandwich? a sandwich? Oh, that's a sandwich. Is it an yeah. egg salad sandwich? <laughs> Whoa. The cool. That is no a gigantic is sandwich. Is it a katsu sandwich? Is that a piece of like. Actually, uh... yes, Roger, it is. I, I did know. not make the sandwich. I know what my are foods. Are you just using uh, Skype for that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can just load any image as your background. Yeah, I, I, Cause I, I know you have mm -hmm. any image. Hold on. Are you at the airport, Tom? What's going on? Yes. There? I'm at the Oakland airport in 2008. <laughs> I knew yes, you were a time I traveler. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a deep cut right a there. Very old picture. Which mall is that? That's the sand. That's in San Jose, right? 
Oh that's my god! Menlo, Menlo Park. I that guess we did Park. a meet and greet with Kate and Leo, and yeah, Tom was there. Patrick Beja is yes. now behind me, holding a, a first generation iPhone. <laughs> Look at the size of that little iPhone. Look my wallet's baby. bigger than that. His hands yeah, are Patrick. huge. It's what about mirrors. a very large falafel sandwich? Delicious. <laughs> and you can oh, wait a like, minute. What is the? You, you oh, uh, that's Otis. a tree. It's a tree. Yeah, because I, I was in my car, the and then Otis is in my rearview mirror, being like, "Please, could I have some?" Just in a bump. Just one speed bump. Because it was the largest falafel sandwich ever been made. Oh, and right. I bought yeah, it I and I ate the whole now. thing. Do we have a Django? Yes. Oh. Wow, I that's that a piece. really old photo. Right? Like or is that one? 2017. From... She just looks one. like a puppy yeah, in the she's... photo. She's got puppy eyes. Puppy eyes. Yeah. She, she, when, when you uh, had food, she, the years fell away for that dog. Oh yeah, I know. That's you know the fluffle eyes. I'm well aware. Really, I, I hate watermelon. It's the thing I hate most. Yeah, Is it because never, it's green on the outside. And never red on the served inside? Sarah a big plate of watermelon Kit Kats and French fries. Oh. Ugh. Oh. Wait, wait a second. You don't like <laughs> well, French fries? I know. I don't like potatoes. <laughs> Well, I mean, potatoes in general, I can understand, but French fries? That's made from potatoes. Well, uh, French fries aren't very French. <laughs> They're not French. Disgusted by I'm just like, I just don't want potatoes ever. Watermelon, French however, fries. I will I will leave the restaurant. I, I just realized my microwave is dying. Like, it, the door doesn't slam shut all the way, so it doesn't turn on <laughs> occasionally. It's a, And it's 15 years old, and it's one of those things that, I don't remember the last microwave I got, but I remember getting that one back in 2003, the current one. So it's that, been around. It's been a while. Roger, treat yourself. And <laughs> You're worth it. Man. Another microwave. I mean, like these are not expensive devices. No, but I'm. It's, this is the thing, especially when it comes to appliances. For some reason, I think they should last forever. That I'm looking at on Amazon <laughs> is is your sub a hundred dollars, man. Like this is. This is not even a a question. You just gotta you just gotta get another microwave. It just sounds like a I don't know. It seems kind of um, like a very quick decision that you can probably <laughs> make during yeah, your I guess show it just before seems... we even start, and then you would no longer have to worry about electrocuting you or your family. But it's like so extravagant. There's something about appliance shopping that demands I physically touch and you know feel the product before I buy it. Like a twenty dollar toaster, you would need to touch it before. Thirty five dollar toaster, yes. A toaster yeah. oven, yes. A toaster oven, you were like, you would, you would yeah. want to see it. Like a laptop, I order online, sign and see and get it. That's crazy, Tom. You weren't here last week, and we got into a conversation about replacing microwaves. <laughs> oh no, Tom was in it. On, he was in the chat room on it. I was oh, listening, okay. uh, and uh, Roger came to my house to shoot the Tech Republic top fives this weekend, and I offered him a microwave, a free. Did you microwave. take it? Well, my microwave works. I'm just saying that the latch is a little worn, and sometimes it doesn't connect all the way, so it, the microwave will not turn on because it's not so safe. So no, so no, you didn't take the free microwave. No, I did take the. Okay, all right. So you're still on this broken microwave that you that you refuse. You need to like date another microwave for for a year before <laughs> you can have it move in, despite the fact that it costs fifteen dollars. All right. Also, also the microwave I gave him wasn't good enough. It didn't have a. Oh, um... No, it was it was. Oh, it was much beggars much and more. choosers. Oh, little... Roger. Oh, a free mic not so good for high and mighty Roger Chang. Israeli security researchers Noam Rotem and Ron Lokar published their research Friday. Uh, sorry, a spider was just crawling up my shoulder. Uh, oh. <laughs> Friday the I was 13th. like, I was looking, I was looking at my own shot, and I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, the best part about that was, I don't know if you saw in the Twitch chat, Sarah, but like a couple minutes before for that, someone said, "Did you just see a spider crawl up Sarah's camera?" I could, I, I kind of looked at my shot, like, is my shot okay? And I was like. That's weird. I almost see like a smoky thing over here. And then I was like, oh, I got a spider. So I ran out, you know, because I'm like scared. There's a little spider, tiny little spider that's coming down my ring light. And it, so it looked really big because it's like much closer to the camera than I am. It's like the cutest little spider. The spider can stay. But in the shot, it looked really big. <laughs> and that's the only thing that I saw. And so I, you know... Because it, we were so like talking about like Friday the 13th and I, you know, changed myself. <laughs>
They're Seagulls are also uh, famously anti-intellectual. That's another reason. They're also bullies. They yeah. like steal fish out of puffins' mouths and stuff. Real jerks. Yeah, puffins are known as the academics of the sea. That's yes. <laughs> They're brightly billed. You've heard of chicken of the sea. Mm. Well, yes. mm-hmm. these are puffins. The academics of the sea. Just as tasty. <laughs> and with half yeah. the calories. The intelligence. And, and you feel kind of smart afterwards. Ah. Mm. I know. Great <laughs> puns today, everybody. I feel the, up, the tone of your thoughts. voice didn't seem to match the greatness, though, for some reason. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> well, the words said they were great, but the tone didn't seem to match that. That's all I'm saying. Right, yeah. 